Hello everyone and welcome to another beer review. Now this beer I actually meant to do this a while ago and uh, unfortunately I never got round to it. It was part of a kind of series we were doing obviously in the kind of local area around about the southwest and this is one I wanted to kind of try because it was a bit unusual but the way things kind of happened with work and everything else it, it just kind of time ran away from me and I never got the chance so I'm finally back getting the chance to do it now this is a beer from the Badger Brewery and that's a Badger Brewery which is just based outside a place called Blandford Forum now Blandford Forum is in Dorset it's like makes up the kind of triangle in Dorset between kind of you've got Pool on the kind of east side you've got Dorset or Dorchester sorry in the kind of west side and then just kind of in the middle and above it is kind of Blandford Forum. So what we've got from the Badford, Badger Brewery is we've got the Blandford Fly. Now there's a bit of a history to it. This is sweet and spicy golden ale. It's a 5.2% but it is something a bit different. It has won awards. I'm going to have to, I'm going to actually have to put my glasses on. <laughs> well the other glasses to actually read what it says but uh, yes. Um, Badger does make some good eels and I've been to the brewery a few times and I've been in the shop I've even had breakfast in the, the kind of little restaurant thing there that's very nice with the, the workers or the canteen or whatever you want to call it so yes it's the Blanford fly um, it is just like I said sweet and spicy golden ale it's in the World Beer Awards it won the United Kingdom bronze uh, there's a little story around it. Don't just take a word for it. Ask any fisherman and they'll attest. It's not only the tickle of the trout that bites on the tranquil river Stour at Blandford. Should you wade these waters on a warm summer's night, beware the infamous Blandford fly, whose bothersome bite can only be soothed with a spicy slice of fresh ginger. Mm -hmm. So apparently applying uh, some fresh ginger to a bite will help to kind of soothe the kind of maybe swelling or irritant of it. Maybe it does. So a uniquely sweet and spicy golden ale, a refreshingly different ginger taste is offset with a hint of sweet toffee. Mm. So, well, it's kind of very distinct flavour so if it doesn't deliver then they are pushing out a lot of crap aren't they but I think I honestly knowing people and how they do things at the Badger Brewery I probably will taste these flavours um, I don't know in what kind of strength um, but I think these flavours will be present in some shape or form so without further ado Let's crack it open. There we go. That's it. Oh, you can smell ginger. Boom, straight off, straight out of the bottle. Ginger! Right, let's pour it out and we get a real good sniff at it. Right. Um, hmm. Is that something on the lens? I don't know what that is. Some marks there. No, it's a viewfinder kind of uh, graphics on the screen. <laughs> <laughs> There's professionalism. <laughs> what a twat. Anyway, right, so the, the lens is now cleaner than it ever has been. But anyway, right, so. And it wasn't even dirty. There you go. It just shows you. Don't have to be the brightest in the world <laughs> to review a beer. <laughs> right, anyway. So, yes, it's. Well, I suppose it's golden. 
Um, getting on towards kind of a wee bit amberish. You can see he's a good, what we call a floaty head. And you sometimes get a prong cracker head, which is one of the ones where it's got a lot of big bubbles and small bubbles mixed together. And as the big bubbles kind of burst, which they usually do quite quickly, it just shrinks down everything. Um, so usually with a prong cracker head, as I call it, it doesn't actually last very long. This is what's called a floaty head. So it's quite wispy. It's lots of big bubbles. Um, but these type of ones tend to kind of, you usually kind of lace the glass better and everything else. So as you can see, there's a bit of lacing going on. So, it does smell of ginger. It does have a smell of sweetness. It has a smell of kind of like a bit like kind of ginger wine, a bit kind of crabbies about it, but um, obviously not as strong, but it is a, it's a kind of almost ginger ale kind of smell to it. It's not like a ginger beer, it's not like a kind of more kind of soury bitter. It is a kind of a sweet gingery toffee smells. Um, I must, must be a sweet malt they're using as well to get these kind of toffee kind of aromas. No real hoppy smell at all, but I think with the ginger and everything else, um, that may be a bit overpowering, but we'll see what we actually get when we taste it. So, let's give it a go. Well, wow. The ginger is definitely there, but it's not overpowering. The ginger flavour is there, but it's just a nice gentle ginger flavour. It's not an intense or very strong ginger flavour that becomes kind of sickening or overpowering. The ginger's there from start to finish. And know what it's like. Just that slight aftertaste of like what you call, you know, like kind of a ginger loaf. Not like ginger bread. Ginger bread is, like, or a ginger nut. It's quite a more harsher you kind know, of ginger aftertaste, you know, when you're eating a ginger nut, if you've ever had a ginger nut or a ginger snap biscuit. There's a kind of more kind of a stronger kind of ginger aftertaste. It's a light ginger aftertaste that you probably get from a ginger loaf, you know, or a ginger cake. It is elements of top. In fact, it is very ginger loaf like or ginger cake like subtle ginger flavour it is there from start to finish there is a sweetness not an overpowering sweetness not a real strong sweetness but there's just what I would call a pleasant sweetness this is not a session in any way shape or form this is one to be enjoyed and savoured and it would probably be really quite nice in a kind of a, a winter's evening maybe after you know to enjoy after maybe a nice roast dinner or something like that um, or something to enjoy after maybe you've been out doing things on a cold day, maybe doing some nice kind of rambling or walking or, or whatever people want to do in a wet day. Um, but yeah. No bitterness, no real hoppiness um, to say. Maybe ever so slight bitterness. I mean, it's a teeny tang of bitterness on, on the back and the aftertaste there, but very, very little. You've really got to go searching for it because the gingerness, the toffiness, the kind of light sweetness, and it is a light sweetness, but it is, it is a distinct sweetness. It's not a kind of like a, what we call a hint of sweetness or a feeling of sweetness. This is sweet. Um, but yeah, very interesting. And the more you drink it, as your mouth gets more acclimatised to it, it is actually a very, very nice beer indeed. Unusual too, but yeah, fair play to it, it's a, it's a very nice beer. The beer price if I remember rightly is just under the two pound mark a bottle of, of that kind of uh, ilk 
So yes, I think if I remember right, it was roughly about one pound eighty to one pound ninety, depending on which shop you go to. Um, and yeah, as you can see, you're getting some lacing in the glass, which is normal. This is what you tell me get. You, you you get the kind of little floating kind of. Um, well, it's a kind of a scum rather than a head. I'll just lift it up to kind of let you see if I can. Where am I? Just looking at my belly just now. There we go. And as you can see, there's a, what I call kind of a little, kind of what we call a floating head, which will go to a kind of a kind of scum, a kind of mill pond kind of scum that you get. And of course, you do get kind of lacing in the glass if you if you tip it. Not lots of lacing, but you can see the paint is staying alive. It's not going dead. But yeah. That's quite nice actually, yeah. As usual, I'm not saying I could drink a lot of it, and I wouldn't really drink it with food or anything like that. It's one of these ones you can maybe just sit and enjoy with by yourself or with a friend. And just enjoy it for what it is. It's one of these ones where you maybe got a, a couple of kind of unique flavoured or, or kind of strong flavoured ales, and you maybe want two or three and you just want to boom, just sit there and have a night of it just have a, a little drink of two or three kind of really good kind of strong or more powerful flavoured beers so yes I can see that in amongst that kind of evening for barbecues and kind of more kind of session drinking and things like that no no I, I I'm not saying you couldn't but I think it would become quite sickening and obviously quite bulky as well with the flavour Food, oh. I suppose you could maybe, I think because of how strong it is, I think it could probably go well with a curry or or something kind of more stronger flavoured, something kind of spicy food, that type of stuff, maybe Mexican and things like that. But again, I could probably go with a roast as well, that type of stuff. Set yourself up for your spotted dick or your bread and butter pudding at the end, but yeah. Very nice. Um, very unique. What I will say is if you get the chance or if you're able to, to get hold of this, which I think you might be able to even if you're outside of the UK, because I know a lot of people are probably thinking, it's all right, you basically, you know, trying some of these beers, but if I'm outside of the UK, I'm never going to get a chance to try them. So, what is the point um, of watching reviews of beers that I'll never get a chance to taste unless I come to the UK? And I understand that. But there is a place, an online shop in the UK called beersofeurope.co.uk. And I think most of their beers they will probably ship internationally. Again, don't quote me on it, but it's something to kind of look into. I need to obviously double check that. But they do have a lot of different beers from all across Europe and a lot from the UK. And it will have these types of beers. So I'd have a look at beersofeurope.co.uk and check to see what's available and whether they will ship it internationally. I think they will. Now, this isn't a sponsor. It's not an endorsement in any way it's just I've had been looking at it because I would like to review some beers that I can't get in the UK and I'm going to be utilizing this to try and get some of these beers what I want to do is try some of the Russian beers that I like and everything else unfortunately I've looked at what they've got so far and they tend to kind of stick to the Baltica now Baltica is a kind of mass-produced kind of range of beers in Russia that well um i try and avoid drinking just because they're mass produced and there's far better beers brewed locally and everything else in fact there's a really good brewery very close to where um we live in matishi just outside moscow and uh, there's a good brewery in there that brewed lots of different beers especially more kind of big branded for the kind of big brand companies but it also brews 
some of its own beer in smaller quantities and some of it is absolutely fabulous. But anyway, um, I wanted to obviously try and I think the wife and the family are actually over in Russia just now. So I might get them, if I speak nicely to them, will they bring back some beer for us? So yes, so but yeah, have a look at uh, beersofeurope.co.uk. They might be able to help you to get some of these beers to be able to try for yourself, hopefully. Again, not an endorsement. I get nothing for mentioning it. I'm just looking at it for my own benefit and I'm just passing it on because it might help you for to get hold of beers that you might find difficult and depending on where you live in the world. As for what else has been happening, um, I think one of my next beer reviews probably in the next few weeks is going to be one of my own. I have like to brew my own beer and uh, I brewed two batches of lager, two different, basically the, the same ingredients, same recipe, but a slightly different brewing styles. So I've done a kind of an enclosed carbonated brewing style where I will still obviously condition it in the bottle and add carbon drops as well to kind of finish off the carbonation. And I've done what we call an airless flat um, fermentation or brewing for the other one and I've basically put a lot of carbon drops on it to try and kind of push the carbonation forward and it's going to have a longer um, bottle conditioning so the the first one will probably condition for probably at least seven to ten days the the second one which is a kind of um, airless um, non-carbon fermentation or brew it will probably brew probably close our condition or probably condition for roughly about 20 days at least and we'll see how it goes the main thing is not to really kind of let it settle and uh, bring the clarity what it's really doing it is to try and build up the carbonation and try and get that secondary fermentation really flowing so we'll soon see how that goes as well so we'll be able to kind of try both of them and see what they're like now, um, with the both of them, they were brewed for seven days. So they both had the same brewing time, seven days. One basically being a, a, an enclosed carbonation brew and one being an airless um, non-carbonation brew. In other words, the air can basically, any carbonation, any buildup of gases can actually escape but nothing can get back in. So that's what we call it, an airless, carbonation free. Whereas this, the first one is basically, yes, the gases will build up, the carbon dioxide will build up from the actual brewing and fermentation, but it can escape. So what it does is it basically kind of gets repatriated, it gets dissolved actually into the actual beer itself. So it was actually quite a big difference when I was bottling them. When I was pouring off, the, the first batch with the carbonation, yeah, it was well carbonated already, good head. In fact, it made a bit of a pain in the backside to bottle, but that's just life. Whereas the second one was a lot easier to bottle because there was very little head. There was still some carbonation, but nowhere near the levels of the first one. And of course, the colour as well, very different. One was a kind of more kind of goldeny straw colour, which was the first one. And the second one was, was almost getting almost very close to kind of light amber ale or kind of light golden ale kind of colour but we'll soon see what it's like once it's finished kind of conditioning and kind of settling down as well one was obviously very very hazy and uh, that was the first one because the carbonation helps to kind of keep everything kind of suspended because the other one doesn't have the carbonation then of course a lot of the kind of uh, sediment doesn't really suspend so readily or so easily in the fluid so it sinks down to the bottom so it's almost kind of semi-clear when it comes out compared to the first one so anyway i'm blabbering on about that i can talk about brewing and fermentation for forever but anyway so we've tried them they're now basically conditioning this is a sunday so it's a case i'll be watching over the next week so I think the first one I'll be looking at maybe next weekend and probably seven days from now and we'll see if it's okay, if it's okay to, and it's kind of conditioned enough, then we'll review it in, in a week's time. Or 
If it's not, then I'll give it an extra uh, three to five days and see how it goes. But the other one I won't be looking at until at least two weeks from now anyway. So um, I'll be checking it out and looking at it two weeks from now. But I think it'll probably need even more than that just to get the chance to get the carbonation up at least. But we'll soon see what it's like. Um, so that's something to look forward to. And I tend to kind of brew more ales. Um, what I want to do is brew a Scottish Heavy. So we've got a good recipe for that. So I will be brewing that up probably as my next brew once these are kind of... The problem is I've only got a certain amount of bottles. Um, my vessels are now clear so I could start brewing just now but there's no way I'm going to be able to drink all these beers because I, I think there's a total of... It's only a small batch. So I think it's roughly about... Roughly about 20 pints of each. So in total 40 pints and there's no way I'm going to be drinking 40 pints in the next few weeks. So unfortunately I'm going to have to wait before I can start doing my heavy. So I think at least probably two or three weeks away before I can maybe start doing my kind of heavy. Because obviously I've got to allow these beers to condition and then get a chance to drink them and enjoy them. But usually I do kind of more ales. I've been doing a couple of Yorkshire bitters, which I've been really enjoying, especially over the warm weather. When the Euros were on, I was drinking some lovely Yorkshire bitter. It's something you don't really get down here, and that was really enjoyable. And previous to that, I've been doing quite a few different kind of dark stouts as well. And they've been really enjoyable, and I've been mucking about with kind of different kind of sugars and things like this as well, kind of darker sugars, molasses, things like that. And they've been really nice. So I've got some good recipes that I want to basically do for the winter. So that'll be kind of, this is August just now, so I'm a few months away before I'll be starting kind of brewing and condition a good few bottles. I probably need to get some more bottles and uh, I can maybe do a good kind of winter's kind of uh, batch of different kind of stouts and darker beers to try. Maybe try something similar to this, maybe try a kind of, see what I can do with a, some kind of more unique flavours like ginger and and everything else. But anyway, I'm prattling on and uh, let's not do this for too long. So anyway, marks out of five, I would probably give this a four, just for flavour, how well brewed it is, because I think a lot of times if you're adding kind of more unique flavours to beers, you can overpower it and you can making it uh, too much of one thing and not enough of the other and there's no real balance. They've actually got a really nice balance here. They've got the ginger flavour, it's there throughout, but it's not overpowering and it's not ridiculously strong. There is the sweetness to it, but again, it's not the sickly sweetness, it's not overly sweet, but it is sweet. And... Uh, yeah, it is a kind of unique flavoured beer and well done to Badger for, for doing it. And I, I think they've done it in a very successful fashion. So yes, I'm giving this a, a 4 out of 5 because it's a well brewed beer and it's also kind of unique flavours as well. So there's not many beers that's going to have that kind of similar kind of flavouring on the market. If you can get hold of it, I would recommend try it. And... Uh, See what you think. I would probably say, well, if you want to give any kind of comments, if you've tried this beer or you're about to try it or going to try it and you want to leave any comments, feel free. But I don't think many people watch these videos anyway, but to actually leave any comments. But if you do, feel free and uh, I will reply. But anyway, that's us. It was a very good review because it's a very good beer. So thanks for watching. And cheers.